let's think uh, I would like to ask it's more generic and uh, you know we decided to call this series uh, Budo no Kuni and uh, you know you lived in Japan a different time you keep on visiting Japan so and you are part of you know the martial arts world martial arts scene and so you know I would like to ask you what, what do you think about uh, the future of these arts, especially in Japan, and uh, in the way that uh, now both the arts and Japan are becoming more, you know, inter internationalized. I mean, what do you think about the about the future of these arts? Gosh, it's a tough question. <laughs> um, it's a tough question because it's a, a complex question. Mm -hmm. um, Kodyo almost died in the Meiji period, mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't. It started to die in Bakumatsu when individual daimyo began to order their own shihan of various dyu. Within one year, for example, you will merge all these dyu. This started before Kendo. Uh, they were saying, they were starting to see the encroachment of the West and the threat to Japan as a, a culture and a nation. And so there were already moves that how can we protect ourselves? And if we have 15 dyu in one, how do we train together, right? Sure, sure. So there was already this homogenization process. And then in one sense, uh, Japan suffered a terrible defeat, culturally speaking, with the entry of the West into Japan. It happened in such a shock, and there was really this abandonment of traditional arts. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I've forgotten his first name, Erwan uh, Bales, uh, who is the, uh, a German, who is the uh, physician to the imperial family, he became fascinated and joined the uh, Jikishinkagiyu Dojo briefly, and that got a lot of publicity. He a foreigner and thought these archaic arts were so interesting. He tried to join Jujutsu, and he was told that, uh, um, well, you have to do this sort of art from childhood. That wasn't exactly true, but everybody was afraid if we break the arm of the imperial <laughs> the physician, the imperial yeah, family. Yeah, we <laughs> but he was instrumental in bringing Yoshinyu to Tokyo, right, where it was, it was mostly located in Chiba, and the, the first matches between Yoshinyu and the Kodokan, which have been really, should I say, rewritten to the Kodokan's advantage, but those first matches, Bales was a part of that, um, uh, sort of getting that going. Uh, when Japan sort of hit modern times, uh, there was a simultaneous movement to modernize martial arts, but also to use Koryu to strengthen the, the spirit of the nation. Right? And we can go into a lot of extraneous yeah. detail, good, bad, and different. So there was a kind of a revival of Koryu. But I have to say, Koryu was already having hard times in the 1930s. In 1936, the Kobudo Shinko Kai was founded. Now consider the name, Kobudo Preservation Society. Right that it was necessary for different you yeah. to actually group together to survive as and opposed to each other. Yeah. Right. Why would we need each other? Why should Ito you need Yagyu you to help us survive? Right? Once upon a time there were they were right, right, right. Right. right? But it was already that attenuated. Right? Now World War II happens and this sounds very trivial and code code you. But after uh, World War II, many teachers died during the war. Right. Uh, there was the, the ban on martial arts practice, people had to do it in secret. And during the restoration, uh, practice in Buddha was not the first priority for many right. people, right? right? survived, right? right? But there was a generation, uh, I arrived at the tail end of most of that generation, where many of the teachers had experienced war. Nita Sensei walked out of the, uh, of Todahabukuru, walked out of the Tokyo firebombing, you know, to uh, survive. She walked all the way to Mitaka. Um, other teachers I've met fought in war, right? So they, their, their, um, their Koryu practice had a particular virility, a particular ferocity, uh, and a particular seriousness. This is not just a hobby they were you, you can even steal that in some of the of the videos of the of the, the, the early demonstrations back in the, in the 70s and 60s. You can see a very different spirit in the, yeah. those groups, even when they were old. Yeah, yeah. Now another generation has come, and this this tension between well nobody's going to fight with a spear, nobody's going to fight with a sword, 
So are we just doing a hobby? How do you train as if you're going to fight with a spear, even though you know you never are? How do you train with that seriousness? And a lot of people don't know why they would. Right? So there's a real danger that uh, for most people in Japan as well as the West, this becomes a kind of exciting hobby. Uh, there's a lack of seriousness about it. Uh, also, I'm the beneficiary certainly of um, being allowed to train in these archaic arts and certainly in terms of writing and things I've done, I'm a small part of the way these arts are spread. But when I hear that uh, uh, one or another Kodyu has study groups in say 17 countries and 3,000 members, that's not Kodyu anymore because Kodyu is, has to be taught face to face. It has to be taught with a master instructor, and by master instructor I mean someone who has mastered the school, not somebody of a rank. But they truly have mastered the school, passing on an essence to somebody else. And there's a real danger when you start having a, a group that is supervised by somebody who trains with somebody else who goes to Japan once, once a year. year. Um, you no longer have Kodyu. You know, and I, I do worry for the future of that. Um, I don't have an answer for it either. I, the only answer I have is to try to ensure that the people that I work with at least maintain as much of that seriousness and ferocity as possible. And yet, you know, here's the interesting thing. Uh, the best Kodyu schools I've ever been to always have laughter as a part of it. Uh, the same way the most relaxed military people I've always met right. Are the most highly trained. Right? Uh, they don't need to be stiff. They don't need to uh, have shouted orders because they know what they need to do. I call that kind of I call it wolf pack etiquette. In wolf pack etiquette, the wolves are all attuned to the alpha wolf. And when the alpha wolf's relaxed, everybody relaxes. But at the fraction of a second that the alpha wolf is is focused, all the other wolves are focused. And to me, that's the way the koyu should 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 run. And that only, require, that only uh, occurs when there's an intimacy. So I am worried about, you know, uh, one level it sounds elitist to say, you know, I'm worried about all this code of spreading, but I'm also worried about um, the essence, the specialness of it just dying. And that would be a tragedy, because there's things that are so unique that only occur in a small intimate group. Wow. I'd like to say that I mean, you, you do your best to, to preserve that in, in your schools, you know, this is the, the spirit that these things are done. Uh, these are families, right? So you protect your own family, you try to keep it alive, to keep it going, and then, you know, someone else will protect their own family, and hopefully, you know, they will continue surviving. And, I mean, there are at least 200 of them still surviving, so we have a good, well, a good sample of what it might have been sometime in the past, right? So, anyway, it seems we're running out of time, and uh, I just I would like to thank you again for being with us in this first episode of Buddha on Moon. It's been a pleasure again, it's always a pleasure hearing you talk about this time when your passion is, is contagious. And of course, we'd like to thank all of you for watching this first episode. Uh, don't forget to check the links below about uh, Alessandro's work, his books, and uh, what we do in BAB Japan, uh, BuddhaJapan.com and Hidden Magazine. And uh, if you like what you saw, you know, spread the word, tell your friends, right? Share social networks. If you didn't tell us, again, you'll find contact information here, and we'll try to do better next time. Thanks very much. <laughs>